The latest piece of Disney's woke propaganda machine, the movie Elemental, has officially bombed. It is a box office flop. And as we see this movie flop, we can see not just the failure of this individual movie, but rather of Disney's entire business strategy and approach. Something that was approved not just in the showroom, not just you know while they're filming the movies, but in the boardroom. This is something that had approval from everybody at Disney, including Bob Iger, the CEO, and as well as a whole host of lawyers and in-house counsel, like I used to be, not for Disney, but in another company. So today, I'm gonna talk about that and really get into this and how this movement, which starts with policies set inside of a corporation can turn out to fail and to have a giant failure for this movie in financial real terms and how this is really insidious and targeted at your kids not just disney employees but your kids as always i'm andrew esquire american attorney specifically florida attorney uh, living over here in asia and this is the Legal Mindset Channel, where we help you be your own judge. Always doing it uh, relatively straightforward and direct here on Legal Mindset. So I really want to get into it about this movie because I think when we look at box office flops, we can look at them individually. And I think a lot of other channels and people I respect and enjoy, enjoy talking to, they look at these things in isolation. They look at these things by themselves. But that is the entirely incorrect way to look at this when you're analyzing a marketing strategy, particularly as Disney is stepping up and taking legal positions based on this woke marketing strategy. So first, let's turn to the fail. Just so you guys know, I'm not making this up. I'm not inventing things. Uh, pretty clear this was covered by Zero Hedge where I got a lot of this information. So shout out to Zero Hedge, uh, which you know covered that initial bomb. But you can see over here on Screen Rant, where, where you see pretty clearly this failure. So Elemental's box office is one of Pixar's lowest debuts in three decades since Toy Story. So this is a resounding failure. And how much of a failure is this? Well, if you go down the actual numbers, we're looking at around $28, $29 million. Uh, and that is the worst since Toy Story in 20... Um, Toy Story's 29 million in 1995, but understand that Toy Story's 29 million was not adjusted for inflation. So that's far more money uh, than was taken in by Elemental here. So this is the biggest failure in three <laughs> decades, which is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, leads you that leads you to question why when you see the uh, trans color shirts here on our non-binary character. This is. Uh, the water elemental non-binary character that they set up here. So how big of a financial failure was it? Well, it was a financial failure of $200 million. $200 million. So uh, that's the, the budget. So you less out that amount that they ended up recouping about, let's say $30 million almost. Well, you're, yeah, you're $170 million in the hole. So that is a large failure and mind you this is as disney is looking to make money as they need money they need to push they need to make more money uh but they're failing and failing and failing and this is yet another bomb as we saw Lightyear bomb as well and many of the other movies strange world all these other movies have bombed bomb 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 and pixar is turning out to be a fundamental failure mind you this is this movie came out about the same time as major pixar executives were fired so are they going to try to blame it on those executives instead of on this non-binary stuff? Yes, absolutely. I guarantee you right now they are going to try to blame it on that. And mind you, this is a story that was intent on not only making the character non-binary, but focusing on xenophobia and racism. This was a, you know, a scene in which they had multiple scenes. Uh, for example, where the fire people are looking at the water people saying, oh, I think I've seen you before. And they go, well, not all of them look the same, you know, kind of hinting to that racial stereotype that certain types of people think other types of people all look the same. All those sorts of things, very, very uh, woke in its marketing, in its messaging. Um, if you go, look, go back and you look at the actual voice actors, uh, you see the voice actors here celebrating uh, and just coming out and saying, hey, look, you know, I'm happy. You know, they're happy to be pushing these non-binary characters. They're putting it out there that these characters are non-binary. They use they, them pronouns. Uh, you know, this is the first. 
This is what they were pushing. So when it fails, instead of blaming, oh, this is the thing, like we shouldn't be pushing this on children, they decided to deflect. Now, why do they do that? What's the bigger strategy here? And what am I saying that most people are missing? This is part of Disney's woke marketing plan. Now, I know that some of you have joined this channel recently, and so maybe you haven't seen me go off on this in the past, but I've been talking about this for perhaps the past year on and off. I know that lately I have been focused a lot on Disney because of their legal battles, particularly their battles with Ron DeSantis and the special district in Florida. However, I have previously ad nauseum talked about their woke marketing strategy, but I think we need a little bit of a refresher because there's a lot of new subscribers on this channel and some of you may not know that. By the way, I know also that 50% of you are not subscribers, so if you'd like to subscribe today, I hope I have earned your subscription. So. Uh, over here, we have this uh, other part of their plan, which was the Baymax uh, period scene. Now, some of you may have seen this. If you've been on my channel a long time, you may have seen this. It's posted by Chris Rufo a while ago. But this is from Baymax, which promotes a uh, person who's wearing the transgender flag and the idea that men can have periods to children as young as two years old. So uh, let me just point out here what we've got, and I'll play this scene for you uh, right here where Baymax, we'll forward it a little bit, is looking for tampons. So let's, let's, well, let's which watch Which of these this. products would you recommend? Oh, um, well, these are the tampons I usually use. Thank you. I prefer pads. They're more comfortable for me. Thank you. I always get the ones with wings. Thank you. Okay, so right there, uh, non-binary person, trans person over here, uh, trans flag on the shirt right so uh so yeah the masculine period uh pushed out the children as part of yet another show and, and once again this is something that's becoming more and more and more common for them as they go through their agenda now where does this come from where is this rooted in it is rooted in the boardroom the boardroom ordered an entire reorganization and for those that haven't seen this video those that have you know you'll know about it but this was the reimagine tomorrow program this is part of their marketing strategy which is pre-Bud Light, guys. This came out before Bud Light, but only now are we finally getting attention in light of Target, in light of Bud Light, Miller Light. People are finally stepping up and pushing back. So I, I wanna bring this back up because all of those that are pushing back against Bud Light, Miller Light, whatever, all these other marketing strategies should be pushing back against this too. And, and let's let's play this out. It's about a minute and 17 seconds, but let's hear what they want to do and incorporate in all of Disney. It's like, I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. They have been a huge, like informative <laughs> part of my life. But at the same time, like I worked at small studios most of my career and I'd heard, you know, you hear whispers. Like I, I'd heard things like, oh, you know, they won't let you show this at a Disney show. And I'm like, okay. So I was a little like sus when I started. And so she used the word sus, which, okay. All right, let's continue here. But then my experience was bafflingly the opposite of what I had heard on my little pocket of like, you know, proud family, Disney TVA, um, the showrunners were super welcoming Meredith Roberts and like the, the, our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like, my like not at all secret gay agenda and hold on hold on hold on whoa, 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 whoa. what's that what's that not at all secret not at all secret so so disney has been forwarding a not secret an open right and this is something that we've been saying for a while but it's an open agenda right targeted at children at children it's not it's not meant to be targeted at adults it's not something adults this is why we've got the leave the children alone, you know, hashtag, why that trended, why people are pushing out there, and why I think this is the line in the sand, because these people, these monsters, are targeting children explicitly, and they have an agenda to do that. They're telling you. They are telling you they are targeting your children with this. This is Disney. This is actual Disney companies, Disney executives. You know, this is from Disney, right? Disney branding over there on the side. They got sign language here so everybody can understand this, right? You got the closed captions. So this is what they're out there with. It's not so secret. So let's continue like, here. Something must have happened in the last, like, like they are turning it around. They're 
Well, something must have happened. Something's going hard. Uh, something called ESG, those who don't know, you know, about that social governance and the social governance credits. Yeah, this is giving you brownie points for bringing up the woke stuff. That is exactly what came around and exactly what has changed major American corporations around the around the United States. They know that half the country is going to have a problem with this. But with that ESG money, they can literally ignore that half of the country and just take the money and continue going hard and then all that like momentum that I felt like that sense of I don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss let's in the background this are, like I was just wherever I could just basically adding queerness to like the, if you see anything queer in the show I'm proud of them but like I, I just was like see no one would stop her you know she's adding it intentionally wherever she goes it's part of it. It's in, integral to it. You know, this is this is it. No one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. See, no one was stopping her. No one was trying to stop her. So so this is this is what's been part of their corporate strategy. This has been part of what they've been aiming for, gunning for, looking for. And, and it's not just aimed at um, the people watching Baymax or Proud Family, because maybe you're a person who doesn't do that. And maybe you were just an employee. Maybe you're just a, a person who's out there. Well, no, 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 no. They're also aiming it at the employees and their children and pushing on them gender affirmation, as they call it, or rather the transing of children. So yes, this is uh, the you know chemical castration of children is something Disney is in support of. They are absolutely uh, pro taking these, these dramatic, unchangeable, life-changing medical procedures uh, for children. They've come out there and said that. That's something they're absolutely 100% uh, in pro of. And, and they've spent all this time pushing this, all this time pushing this agenda, this message, you know, this, this uh, type of marketing, when at the same time they've needed to clean out their house because they've had in the background running around employees that are engaged in human trafficking. There's also those that are engaged in sex crimes, that are engaged in trying to solicit minors. Grady Judd, the sheriff, watch my video on that, on the Disney monster. They, he has been rounding up these people left and right over the past six months. And every single roundup, there is a Disney employee, if not multiple Disney employees that are hauled in for these horrible, horrible, sick and disgusting crimes because they're coming down to Disney because they know, as Grady Judd said, that's where the children are. And Disney is not doing their due diligence to keep these people out and keep these people away from children. So they're trying to draw attention away from these actual horrible things with, you know, this Fagazi and this, uh, this smoke screen. Unfortunately for Bob Iger, this has not worked out well. This has been an abject failure. And I think this is one brick which is heaping in towards financial failure for Bob Iger. So as we go down this road, we're going to see him having to pull back in other ways, both in the business and in legal uh, side of things. I think he's going to have to eventually come to terms with these lawsuits, particularly against Florida, and he's going to have to come to some sort of resolution uh, within the future. Now, it may not be in the near future. It may be delayed for six months or a year, but he is going to need to do that because he's seeing in the box office with Elemental and similar movies, similar productions, failure after failure after failure because the woke marketing does not work. Guys, until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this. Peace.